Okay, so we are continuing with the development of our single sample one-sided t-test. We are in the middle of the recap of our confidence intervals and I hope you have uh, worked that out now by yourself. And so once you understand this, you actually know how to do the t-test because in some ways those two things are exactly the same thing. So let's uh, take a look at R and I show you the solution to the challenge that I gave you at the end of the last video. So there's obviously always different ways to do it, but um, so this, this would be one uh, solution to get to the confidence intervals. And uh, so what I do here is I start by just reading in the data for my variety A. So we had those four numbers. I just use the concatenate function uh, to put it into a vector. And um, I can then calculate the mean of A. And let's see what that is. 727.5. Good. Um, so similarly, I can do the standard deviation with the functions that we learned in the descriptive uh, statistics lab. And uh, with our new formula, I can also calculate the standard error dividing by the square root of n. And um, let's see what that is. Uh, so that's 14.9. So this gives us what we need for the unit conversions of the first two axes. Um, <clears throat> and now this part here is uh, uh, the unit conversion between the second two axes. So we still need to go from percentiles to t-values. So I want the 95% confidence interval. That means I want the 2.5th percentile to the 97.5th percentile. And I have a sample size of 4. It means a degree of freedom of 3. So we can get those two t-values here. Um, so my first one is minus 3.2 roughly, and the second is uh, plus 3.2, so symmetrical at, uh, at the both ends. And um, so with that, I can now calculate my confidence intervals. So it's a t-value times the standard error plus the mean. Um, so there it is, from 679 to 775. And you know this part here you can formulate in different ways. So I can also take the mean and add and subtract uh, just that one value here. So I don't actually have to look them up both. Um, so that works just as well. As you can see that gives me exactly the same number. And obviously R also has a built-in function to calculate confidence levels. And uh, that's actually a t-test. So I told you these are related and uh, it is the same function. So if I run a t-test uh, on this single sample, it will give me that same confidence of our 679 to 775. And um, uh, this is actually the default. Um, so if I don't specify the confidence level, uh, that is what it, what it would give me. But I can uh, specify different uh, confidence levels. So if I want a 99, percent confidence interval. Uh, it's as easy as that and that gives me a wider interval. So instead from 679 to 775 this one goes from 640 to 814 so it's a bigger interval and I'm 99% sure that my true mean falls within this interval. Okay and just for clarity to put the code into the context of our schematic here. Um, so what we did is we defined our a data set uh, for variety A. We calculate the mean standard deviation um, of the sample and the standard error. So that's the standard deviation of the sample means if I were to repeatedly sample. And this is what this represents, right? Um, so I entered my mean here. Um, and what I want to do now uh, when I do my confidence interval calculation, I want to represent this area here, right? So everything that falls um, between these two ends. So this is 95% of my means. And the remainder here, uh, that is where I would make a mistake. This is where I would be wrong. Uh, that's the error that I accept. So it's 2.5% here and 2.5% over here. So now I have to work my way up from those percentiles uh, to my t-values to my original units in order to express this confidence interval in original units. And so the way I do it is I enter my 2.5% into the QT function. That gives me 
minus 3.81, that's my t value, and plus 3.81, so a symmetrical uh, problem. And the 3.81 actually means 3.81 standard deviations. And I know what my standard deviation is, I calculated this. So if I, if I multiply 3.81 times 14.93, I know how far from the mean I'm, I'm out here in terms of uh, absolute values. So it's plus and minus um, uh, that difference. And so all I need to do is add the mean uh, to those values and I have my final confidence interval. Uh, so this is how this works. And um, uh, the inference that I'm making is I'm 95% sure that the true mean yield of uh, new crop variety A is between 679 and 775 kilogram per hectare. So that's pretty good. This is a useful communication, but there is another way to think about this. And so that is the one sample t-test. And I'm just reformulating my uh, statistical statement a little bit uh, to something that the boss might say. So I, I might work for a company in crop reading and variety testing, and um, you know I kind of come up with this great new variety A here, and I'm all excited. You know that's 727.5 kilogram per hectare that I get here, and average is way better than uh, my usual yield for 500 kilogram per hectare. But my boss is asking, you know, how sure can you be that variety A really exceeds that yield by a significant margin? So if, if we're going to roll this out, um, uh, we have to do marketing campaigns. There's, there's quite a bit of money at stake here. And you're presenting this puny experiment with four values. You know, what are you thinking? <laughs> and um, so what am I going to do? You know, am I going to back to uh, testing? Or can I make a confident statement that the data we have is actually suitable to roll this out? Um, so you can see it's it's a very similar question to my uh, confidence interval question, except that in this case, I preset the alpha level. Uh, I calculate my values. So now what we've done, we've just switched around what we want to calculate and what we want to have as preset. Uh, so instead of preset alpha level, I want to calculate how sure can you be. And I have a preset value, which is 30% above the 500 uh, kilogram per hectare, which is a typical yield of uh, those lentil varieties that that company is selling. So my question is, can you figure that out? So again, I uh, ask you to pause the video and see if you can figure that out. So the only piece that's new that you haven't uh, seen before is this function here, PT. So this just does the opposite of QT. Instead of going from this axis to this axis, this will go from this axis to this axis. So you basically have to do a unit conversion from the preset value that is compelling for the boss, so a 30% increase over the regular variety. And she wants to know how sure can you be that that actually is going to materialize. So I, I have 727, and that looks promising, but how sure can I be based on this tiny experiment, right? So do that unit conversion and then the unit conversion here and tell me what it is. So if you can do that, you have invented the t-test. So pause this video and uh, continue when, uh, when you have the answer. Okay, so we start by rerunning what we've done for the confidence interval earlier. So just to get the uh, data read in, uh, we got the mean, we got the standard deviation and the standard error. So these are the basic values that we need here. And um, now the first thing we have to figure out what's really our threshold. So we said um, normal lentil varieties have a yield of 500 and, and we want to beat that by 30%. So that is times 1.3. Uh, so we want to beat 650. So the good news is my 727 yield is above that. So th we, we are still in business. Uh, so th that is uh, possibly going to happen. Now we need to know the difference between the threshold and the mean. So that's 650 minus my mean. And that's uh, 77.5. So I'm 77.5 kilogram per hectare higher than the threshold. And now I need to express that difference in units of standard deviation. So that's going to be my t-values. So 77.5 divided by 14.93, uh, that's my t-value. And that's uh, 5.19. So that is also encouraging, 5.19, five standard deviations. Uh, that is uh, promising. This will give me low probabilities. I already know that. 
and I can plug it in here. So I, I do the last unit conversion to the bottom, minus 5.2 with a degree of freedom of 3 because my sample size is 4. So this gives me a p-value of 0 0.007 and that means I am, so there's one minus that is I'm 99.3% sure that my new crop variety will beat that threshold here. So that's a very confident statement that I can make. I don't need to go back and do further testing. And um, obviously, uh, you know, I walk you through this so that you really understand how t-tests work and how confidence intervals works and how statistics works. But of course, you can throw this into a t-test function, specify our sample, specify any threshold, and can look at the right or left at that threshold. And uh, so this gives us exactly the same value, the 0 0.07. And if I look at the other side, it's a 99.3% certainty that my variety will beat that expectation. And you may notice that um, this is also stated as a hypothesis or alternative hypothesis. Um, we haven't talked about uh, what that means, alternative uh, hypothesis or null hypothesis. And there's a good reason for that. So this is actually not hypothesis testing in the original sense of the word. And it's probably one of the most um, unhelpful contribution of statistics to science, because this really is not hypothesis testing. Um, it just adds a layer of confusion. But I can tell you what it means here uh, for the moment. Uh, we'll get into this later a little bit more. So for the moment, just think of the alternative hypothesis as the statistical statement you want to make. So we are thinking that the 727 is larger than that threshold, right? I, I want to make that statement that we're going to beat that. So I'm picking here as alternative greater. So my statement is the true mean is greater than 650. And in that setup, the p-value that you receive is the probability that you're wrong about that. You could also claim something else. So maybe the situation is different. Uh, what you're interested in is actually something uh, that's low, a low rate of failure, for example. So if your claim is the true mean is less than 650, then you're wrong 99.3% of the time. All right, and I also will give you the solution here again in the context of our diagram. So this time we will go from the top down. So we first figure out our preset value. That's uh, 500 times 1.3 1, 1 is 650. We calculate the difference between the mean and that preset value, um, divide by the standard error, and that gives me the, the same position under the curve, but now just in units of uh, standard deviations. So this would be 5.19 standard deviations out. And then my last step is I just read off from a table that's in the back of a statistical textbook or from that built-in R function that I have here, what's the area under the curve here? So what's my percentile uh, of imaginary means that, that would fall into this tail? And that's 0.07%. So I can tell my boss I'm 99.3% sure that we exceed the 30% gain that you want. So this was the first statistical test that was invented by a, a British mathematician, I was going to say, but he was actually an experimental brewer and a barley breeder at Guinness Brewery in Dublin. And um, so he worked on very similar problems and similar experiments with uh, barley varieties rather than lentil varieties that, uh, uh, that we discussed here. And so he invented uh, this, this whole concept and uh, technique of statistical testing. And uh, there are actually many interesting historical aspects about this. Maybe the vid next video I should do about uh, the history of uh, some of this. But one of the interesting things is that uh, his boss recognized that this actually had commercial value, right? So he was not allowed to talk about it. He was not allowed to publish uh, this. And they saw the commercial benefit. So this was deemed a competitive edge for the Guinness Brewery. Uh, so this was a trade secret that they can do this math.